When you're a beginner, you would do this. And when you're an expert, you would do this. Bonjour! In this video, I will show you 7 ingredients to bring life to your sound designs. I will show you 7 levels of layer management to show you 7 tricks to achieve a fuller sound. Layering is one of the main techniques in sound design. Mixing different sounds together is an excellent way to get richer and fuller sounds, as well as making sounds with more texture and character. Today we'll try a couple of things to explore this concept of layering, by designing sounds progressively more complex. And to make that easier, we'll use Cube, a plugin by Lunacy Audio, the sponsor of this video. More info at the end. The handy thing with Cube is that it allows you to load up to 8 samples, which are placed at each corner of a cube. And they are played depending on the position of a knob in that cube. The closer is the orb from the corner, the louder is the sample. So this allows us to load different samples and then use the orb as a mixer. So level one would be to simply play different samples together. Each sample will bring its own texture and then we can glue them together by processing the whole thing with the same effects. To load a sample, we can click on one of the corners and click on the box that appears. It will take us to the sounds part. And here you can click on the name of the sample to access the library where everything is organized by tag. By processing the whole group with the same effects, like a compression, a distortion or a reverb, you can glue all the sounds together so they will feel more like one thing. For the level 2, we can get a bit more organized and give different roles to our different layers. For a bass sound, for example, we often have our main sound right in the middle, focused on the middle and bass frequencies. It can be a very complex sound, itself made of several layers. So we can use the low pass and high pass filters in the editor of each sample to focus the sound in the range we want. To that we can add a top layer focused on the higher frequencies to add texture and grain. So this can be anything like a paper being torn or crumpled. Or we can try a hair clipper, that can be fun. Then we often have a sub-layer to give a beefy support. This layer is often very simple, like just a sine wave or a saturated sine wave to make the subwoofer rumble. And because the sub is better when it is simple, it is often preferred not to process it with the rest of the layers. To do that, instead of putting it in cube, I'll have it played by another instrument, so it can have its own chain of effects. I'll keep the two chains in the same instrument track, so they can be triggered by the same MIDI track. By defining the frequency range of each layer, you can organize them so they can blend better together. I suppose the rule of thumb is that the lower is the layer, the simpler it has to be. And the higher it is, the more complex it can get. Level 3, you can make alternative textures by using a sample you're already using. You can try the pitch to get the sound fuller, or you can try an arpeggiator to add some rhythm. So here I have this sound made of three layers. I've copied each layer to the corner next to it, and all the copied versions have been detuned by an octave. The two at the top are one octave higher, and the one at the bottom is one octave lower. Then I copied the sample at the bottom to a new corner, and used the arpeggiator to play 16th note. To add even more texture, I copied this layer again, transposed it an octave higher, and put the arpeggiator in random. So the two arpeggiators would blend and create a more interesting texture. Creating new textures and sounds from the same source material give them a good chance to blend well together, as there will be a sense of unity between them. 
Level 4, you can add movement in the sound. Here we are using the orb as a mixer, but you can actually animate it so the different layers can go in and out. This is a good way to add movement in the sound, especially with 8 different layers. That's a lot of sounds to play with. The movement can be smooth, so the sound would evolve slowly, or it can be drastic, so the sound would be more rhythmic. So we can try to add different top layers and alternate between them, so the texture of the sound would evolve while the basses stays the same. Or we can have the orb teleport in different places in the cube, so the sound would be more rhythmic. Level 5, we can level up our movements in the sound. Previously, the movements were only on the volume of each layer, but there can be some movements in the layers themselves. That can be on pretty much anything, like the filters or the effects, for example. And two good ways to do that are to use the LFOs or to use a macro knob. With LFOs, the parameters you want to move will evolve automatically, back and forth. This is when the LFO is in its default mode, where you can draw the shape of the modulation. But you can also make rhythm with this. This LFO has a step mode that is handy for that. And the macro knob is more of a performance knob, so you can draw the animation yourself, or you can record it with a knob on a controller. All the modulations are gathered in a matrix tab, where you can see which LFO or macro knob controls which parameter. And you can see here all the things that can be controlled, including all those parameters for each corner. Level 6 is to use the stereo field. You can use different samples and place them differently in the stereo spectrum, but you can also use the same sample several times, modify it slightly, and then place it differently in the stereo field. From there you can animate the orb to have these different layers play together. This can be a good way to have a very wide sound that is also well unified. Level 7 is to use those layers in time. By that I mean think about the order in which the layers will appear. To design a drum sample for example, we often divide it into three parts. The transient, that is the very beginning of the sound, the body, that is the main sound of the drum, and the tail, that is the rest of the sound, the way it will resonate. So we could have three samples, one for the transient, one for the body, and one for the tail. And then we can play with the envelope of each layer, so we can have them play one after the other. And once we have that, maybe we can try to swap the samples to try different combinations. With these seven layers of leveling, no, with these seven levels of layering, you now have seven questions to keep in mind to always improve your sound designs. One, can I layer the sound I have with another sound to make it fuller? Two, did I process the group to glue everything together, with a compression, saturation, or a reverb, for example? Three, do the layers blend well together? Did I EQ them to allocate a particular range for each? Four, can I reuse a sound I have to create a new layer with it, to add a texture with something similar? Five, can I add movement in the sound? Would it be on the volume, filters, or effects? effects of each layer, would it be a smooth movement, rhythmic or with a performance knob? 6. How does my sound feel in space? How did I use the panoramic? And 7. In which order are my layers introduced? Should they appear one after the other or all at once? Now, if you like the plugin cube that we use today and you'd like to try it, Lunacy Audio has sales running on their website at the moment, as they just released a new expansion pack for it. They don't have a demo version to try it, but apparently the return policy is quite flexible and works quite well. And they also have a light version that is way cheaper, if you don't think you will design your own sound and want to use their presets. By the way, I didn't play the presets, some are very cool.
Also, if you are looking for courses about sound design and music theory, there are two free playlists on my channel. And if you want to support it, there is a link to my Patreon in the description. I'll see you soon for another music production video. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.